And so we're really grateful for all of our panelists that we had today. Um, but then also we have some more people today that I'm gonna introduce you to um, that we're really excited to have. Um, Ed and Sue Liebenthal, they are on our board of directors. Um, they were dentists for many years, ran their own practice. Um, and then they were also elders in a church and they're on our board of directors. So they, for a long time, have engaged ministry and business. And so it's gonna be really great to have them. They're gonna jump on in just a minute. Um, and I wanted to do a couple housekeeping things. So Jamie mentioned it, the hashtag LYCCon21. Take a selfie where you are right now, upload it, and you'll be a part of the slideshow for tomorrow. Um, and so um, can we get Ed and Sue on? Command Center? There they are. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Um, so this is Ed and Sue Liebenthal. They're um, big parts of the board. Um, they have been for many years, um, but then even before that, they ran their own dental practice. And um, I'm going to ask them actually to share a little bit about what it looked like for them um, to engage running a business and also fully engage ministry that the way they have. So what was that like for you? Um, what was it like running a business and also being missionally minded? We were, um, we had a choice when we were coming out of dental school where we were going to practice. Um, we had we were in Chicago area and we really felt strongly that God was calling us to be dentists in a place where they needed a dentist um, not just another another dental practice on us in a strip mall along with a bunch of other dentists so um, we ended up in a small town in southwest Michigan Hartford where uh, we um, joined with another dentist um, there um, to a town of about 2,000, but a drawing area much larger than that. Um, we got to build a business um, hiring people. Um, we got to build a business by um, caring for people. And um, we really felt like both those things were really equally important. I think part of the thing that, that Sue and I enjoyed was having these people that we worked with over the long haul um, be part of our family. Um, in effect, that we, we li literally got to watch them raise their kids. We got to watch them um, grow as, as individuals. We got to take them on trips with us. Um, they went to Costa Rica with us. Um, some of our some of the um, some of our staff members came came down to Boy with a Ball and and served down there. And then over the course of time, we probably took over a hundred people on mission trips, different mission trips and that kind of thing. But the other thing was just the long-term relationships that we had with a lot of our patients um, really was, was a chance to um, pray with people, um, to get people out of pain when they're in pain, obviously, you know, for our profession, but, um, but also to, um, also to minister to them spiritually and, and that type of thing on a daily basis. The other thing it, it let us do, and I'm, I'm gonna let Sue talk here in a minute, but um, it let us do it, like Mark Woodruff talked about earlier is, you know, God blesses you with a career and if you're working in a, in a, a job and he blesses you with a certain amount of resources, whatever, whatever resources he does. And, it's been fun to be able to be part of that giving thing that Mark talked about where you can then let that keep flowing. I've always thought that resources, financial resources in particular, um, are like a, like the Jordan River. It just, it flows. If you keep it flowing, um, you watch God do more. If you try to stop it, it's like, it, like everything gets stagnant. So, what would you say, Sue? Well, there's so much. Um, I think one of the biggest things for us was that as far as a business, I mean, and there was no, you know, it just flows. I mean, business flow to involvement in church. There was not like a big delineation, you know, right. between that. I mean, it's right. your life. Um, but I think the one of the things that we really felt like with our staff is that we, they were, we were discipling them you know, um, along with patients too. I mean, you, we wanted their lives to be better yeah. um, because of being with us, you know, to be able to bless them. Um, the staff being able to do things that they were never able to do and only because that they worked with us that they were able to do that, you know, just to bless them unconditionally. Um, it was sacrificial, it was servant leadership. It was serving our staff, serving our patients. Early on in, in my, in, 
when we first started setting up the practice and setting up um, all the different ways we were going to do things. I read a great book, Business by the Book, and I'd really highly recommend that book to anybody who who's, has their own business. Um, basically, what it was is that anybody who crosses your path, um, both as an employee and as a customer, um, you're responsible for to a certain to differing degrees. And so rather than saying like they're your if you look at them as like your slave, like they work for you, the opposite way of looking at that is actually the truth is that you are there to help them progress. Um, it's basically discipleship. You know, you're like Sue said, you're basically there to help them progress, to know, to know Jesus, to know um, God's will for their life, to um to experience things that God has for them. And so a lot of the things that we tried to do, we tried, to, um, we had one employee in particular who had never left our small little town. She'd never been out of Southwest Michigan. And we were able to take her um, down to Mexico um, for a staff trip. And then after that, she went every year. And I, I think those are the kind of things, the world got bigger just mm -hmm. because they happened to be, um, Part of a practice that that had a vision for that so we were we were thankful for those opportunities and that kind of thing and then um yeah i think that's okay yeah that's great um and then sue um did this really cool thing um several times with us where um they would take their dental clinic that was based out of kalamazoo michigan and create one in a slum mm -hmm. in latin america so uh, they'd bring down PVC pipes and staff, and they would serve hundreds of families um, down in um, the El Triangulo Squatter Settlement in Costa Rica and uh, in Nicaragua as well. So um, I think some of what we've heard today from Ed and Sue and from um, different panelists is um, there are creative ways to engage mission um, mm -hmm. beyond just the four walls of our church mm -hmm. um, or beyond going to another country and being a missionary. Mm -hmm. um, it is like it's your colleagues, it's your coworkers. It's turning and serving and loving that servant leadership piece I was just talking about, um, those around you, which is really the beauty of Love Your City and our hope with Love Your City mm -hmm. is that um, every person would fully engage purpose where they are um, and then try and love those around them. So your business, how does it look? What does it look like for you as a business to turn and love the residents of your community mm -hmm. um and your neighbors like mm -hmm. you're also like you're a business leader but you're also a neighbor like how do you engage mm -hmm. your neighbors and love your neighbors um and then create opportunities for the, um your employees or your co-workers to also learn to serve um because you're a person of faith they may not be but how do you turn mm -hmm. and engage purpose together still so um it's been really i love these kinds of conversations um because they're not always being had but they're really important like, it's really how do we um, how are we where we are and outposts being where we are and being outposts um, like lighthouses and bringing light to other places. So again, it's not just going on a mission trip once a year, while that's wonderful, but it's it's the day to day. It's the 52 weeks out of the year. How do we engage purpose and mission where we are? And Ed and Sue are great examples of that. Um, with that, the next question I have for them, um, but also if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box now. Um, but the next question I have for them is, as you um, did business and as you were doing ministry, um, what were some of the challenges? Um, and then where did you see breakthrough those challenges? Because in, in anything we do, there's always going to be challenge. But like in running a business and also in being elders of a church and on the board, like there has to have been some moments where maybe it was messy or you had to choose one or the other. Like where were some challenges and then uh, breakthrough? I think um, Sam, Sam Bretzman shared something earlier that I, it really resonated with me was the beginning of something is always exciting. It's really fun. It's fun to set up to plan for something and to want to do something new. But then in the middle of something or long term in something, it kind of gets harder. And I think that's where God does some of his best work. Um, I remember a situation where we had we had an employee that was just a very difficult employee and was kind of a um, kind of a person that was a divisive person in the, in our practice. And um, how do you how do you deal with that? That was a real challenging situation for me. Um, I'm a relational person. I want people to prosper. And, um, I had to basically meet with her and basically say, I really believe that everyone should work in a very um, 
um, helpful place, a place that's a happy place, a place that makes your life better. And I don't think this was your happy place is what I said to her. I had to, um, I had to fire her, basically I had to get rid of her. And um, it helped my organization, it helped our organization, it helped our office. Um, and it was a turning point in the office, but that was a difficult decision. I, I didn't sleep well um, all around that decision. That was hard. Mm -hmm. um, we had times where um, you're being very faithful or you're trying to be very faithful in your finances, everything like that. And we had to pay some bills and we didn't have enough money. Now that's difficult. That's one of those things that, you know, it's easy, easy to say, but now when the, when the bill is due, um, you've got to pay your tax bill. And I couldn't see it. God supplied in all those situations. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes he'll, he'll bring you up against the wall to make sure you're, you're with him. Um, and so those, those things are, are tough. Sometimes um, I think there's a, there's, especially with um, in working in business or anything like that, there's a little bit of a feeling that boy with a ball or, or a church or whatever are doing the real ministry. And we're just out here kind of muddling along, making money or doing whatever we're doing. Um, when it it's, it's good to every so often step back from your job and say, what are we really about here? And I, I used to try to do that with my, with our staff and say, you know, we're directly impacting human beings on a daily basis and everybody we meet today, that's important how we treat them and remember what we're about, what we're doing here. This is what's really important. It's not just trying to um, fill a few teeth today. Um, it's, we're actually impacting humans. Um, so I, I think that a lot of times it's, it's good to remember um, how God is using you mm -hmm. on a daily basis and on a you know, patient by patient or person by person basis. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you. Um, I have another question and um, I'll ask this one to Sue, but do you have a favorite Good. story or moment um, from running your dental practice and helping people? Oh. Well, I, I, I want to talk about sometimes, you know, you don't see immediate results as far as when you're investing in people, you know, whether it's, you know, your clientele or your employees. And I think one of my favorite at this time is that we had a friend of our daughter's who was really struggling. She was really struggling. Um, she was in high school and we took her on as an employee and we really invested in her. And she was just with us for a few years. Um, but later on, she has become to, she has come to be a worship leader at a large church through all this. And just that we had any hand in helping her along as far as in her growth and her, and her walk with the Lord was, that's just really satisfying. And I think what I want to say is some of these things, you don't see them for a long time as far as some of the investments that, that you put into people. And it really is all about relationships like people were talking earlier about, you know, it really is. You know, walking in the kingdom is about relationships and in really developing them. So I think, how about you? Do you have a favorite story? Uh, we we had a we had a young man when he was in eighth grade that um, wanted to come and shadow with us one day, oh, yes, <laughs> and he, he had to write a paper for for an eighth grade class. He wanted to come and shadow with us, and so he did. And it was about being a dentist, and he decided uh, he liked that. So then, all through high school, he would shadow with us. He would come in on vacations and that. And then all through college, he would come through. Well, that ended up being Dr. Seth Griffin, who we ended up selling our practice to when we were all done. Mm -hmm. um, so it is funny how mm -hmm. um, yeah, Chris and Jamie talked about this little relationship mm -hmm. thing. The other thing is, I used to whenever he came in when he was a little kid, I used to always throw a snowball at him after after we'd get done with the with his visit, I would have a little snowball fight with him outside during the wintertime. In Michigan, that's about 10 months out of the year. Um, and we would um, we would have um, we'd have a little fun. So it just that kind of, and now he's a good friend of mine. I mean he's you know he's an adult and has has his own son, but he's he's those kind of long-term things pay dividends that you don't always see when you throw your first snowball at them. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the little obediences that later turn into some of the big mm -hmm. things that you don't realize. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, thank you, Evan Sue. Um, it's been great to hear a little bit from you guys. Um, you're a key part of who we are, and so we could let the weekend go by and not hear stories from you as well. Um, I don't know about you guys watching, but I think some key takeaways are um, really just a challenge. Like, how do we learn together? Whether you're in the marketplace or you're a stay-at-home mom, or um, you are in ministry, like, what does it really look like to turn and meaningfully turn and engage your community? Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you're a stay-at-home mom, you have neighbors and your kids have classmates mm -hmm. and friends. Like how do you, um, some of the servant leadership pieces, like how do you turn to love and serve those around you um, intentionally? And then if you're in the marketplace, like you have coworkers and there are people, there are schools around your business and there are um, neighborhoods in the community where your business office is. Like how do you guys as an office or as a business turn to engage them? Um, and each other. That's the other thing, like office Offices are, are oftentimes very lonely because you're um, in isolated environments, specifically this last year, people are working from home. Um, but how do you turn to engage the people who are working alongside you? Um, and then together turn into mission. Um, so with that, our time is wrapping up. It's been great being with you.